thank you so much for staying with us. Well, I was still talking about Nigeria, of course. You know, that, that, that tag set of 2023 governors reminded me of when the president became, when, when the president got into office, he invited the set of 1999. <laughs> <laughs> you know, More or less, the, yes. Yes. So let's talk about One prominent of, one was missing, though. Which was? Hmm. BRF. He was not a 1999 governor. Oh, chief of staff. <laughs> oh, do you want, chief of staff. To, do you want to have a set of 2023 1999 chief of staff? <laughs> it wasn't even a 1993 chief of staff. It was, that was Lai Mohammed in 1999, sorry. But anyway, that's not the conversation we're having this morning. So more Nigerians are slipping into the poverty bracket, not knowing where the next meal will come from. Most families are heavily deep, dispossessed, distressed, and depressed as a result of the unbearable economic hardships. Now, it has been argued that if state governors are serious about developing their local economies, they can borrow from any functional model in the country, Lagos, Rivers, whichever one, where there's been continuity in terms of transformative leadership from one administration to the next. A Harvard Business School study uh, advised leaders of organizations to always have a vision, foster a buying culture of the people in the organization into that vision and share success when it is achieved. It means from day one, there's a shared commitment to achieving organizational goals. Would you say the same has been? You know, most of the time when we're talking about governance, we're reviewing uh, government activities. In most cases, we talk about the federal government. But without the state governments, the federal government's issue policies, I'm not sure how effective they would be. Let's have a conversation this morning. Uh, begin with two legal practitioners. Mr. Ife Ajayi is here with us. He is a legal practitioner. He's with us here in the legal studio. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you very much. And in our Abuja studio, we have uh, Silas Ono, who is also a legal practitioner and a politician. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Mackenzie. Good morning. Morning. Let's begin with you, Mr. Ajayi. One year after, some of the governors are returning. Some of them are first-time governors. So, and from the very beginning, it has been clear that no matter what initiative the federal government comes up with, without the partnership or collaboration of state governors, it's a mirage. In one year, everyone has been talking about harsh and hard economic policies of the federal government. Little mention is made of state governors or state governments. Uh, what's your assessment of that position? Yeah, good morning once again, and it's good to be here. I would say for quite a while, the, the as a general rule, the basic responsibility of government, either at the federal or at the state level or at the local level, is to ensure to bridge the gap between the have and the have nots, and to ensure equal distribution of commonwealth mm -hmm. and the protection of the rights of the citizen. How far have we fared in this regard? We have fared quite poorly. And the reason being that for quite a while, the citizens have always emphasized and placed their focus on the federal government. The federal government has always, you know, evidently not performed satisfactorily. But for some reason, only towards political circle, we see people talking more about the state governors or the state government. And I think personally that most of the development we seek as a nation should emanate primarily or mostly from the state government because it's a subnational which in, in turn is closer to the, to the grassroots. So in terms of more routes, more road, more infrastructure, more development that we seek, I think um, the state governors or the state government have not done too well. Now, going back to your question with regards to how far have this calendar year from, 20, from 2023 to 2024, you know, I would say um, we can excuse 
those governors are coming in for the first time and they're in their first tenure. And the reason being that it's just 365 days, they probably would need time to settle in, they probably would need time to form a cabinet, they will probably need time to you know, come up speed, understand how public service work for those that have not been in public service before. And you know, begin to settle in to formulate their own agenda or their own plan for the growth of their respective states. And for those that are running in their second term, I see no excuse why they should not perform or even do better. But I, I don't know. I mean, let's try to situate it a tad bit, Mr. Jai. Very well. You employ a staff. He's a middle manager in your organization. One year after, he's still trying to settle in? Yes. And the reason why it is altogether not as much as just employing the staff now, politics is riddled with so many intrigues. Now, look at the event of the reinstatement or the, the reinstatement of His Royal Majesty Emir of Kano. You would see that for the past one year, they've been battling with going to court, trying to stabilize. There are factors that might actually come up as a result of political intrigues, and if you are not quite savvy in politics, especially in certain states that have political, you know, um, tension, it's probably a year of learning going through the course. Anyway, mm. I don't, don't okay. know if uh, Silas Mr. Ono agrees with you on yes, that. Yes, that's what I was going to ask you. <laughs> Mr. Ono, do you agree with him or do you have other you know, thoughts? Hmm. Well, uh, thank you very much. I think to, to start with, one must uh, identify first the issue of resource control, which basically uh, talks about resource generation and distribution uh, amongst the various tiers of government and uh, uh, state, federal, and local government per se. Uh, one will be expecting too much to think that the governors will perform magic. Because what I see state governors are, uh, as are uh, basically people who collect money from the federal government and share it in their states. A lot of governors have not, up till this day, since 1999, a lot of governors have not realized that they can invest with the resources they have been given. Look at, for example, the former governor of Akwa Ibom State uh, investment, which is very viable with the Ibom Air, generating resources for the states, which augments whatever they get from uh, the federal allocation. I'm certain that if those resources are managed well, Akwa Ibom State will have extra uh, money to foot their bills. So looking at the governor's <coughs> Uh, especially the first-term governors uh, between last year and now, one will say that uh, a lot of them have not really uh, performed credibly to justify the confidence reposed in them. I like to make an example with my own state, Ebony State. Uh, the governor, one must commend him, for example, for clearing a, a, a pension backlog from 1999, you will be wondering what all the other governors who were there, including one that is minister now, uh, were doing with the pension funds. This man came and has cleared pension debt from 1999 till date. And also salary arrears, being old civil servants. But for me, I do not count these things as achievement. However, one must commend him because he has uh, relieved a lot of families of financial burden. And uh, if there is any viable economy in the state, this would translate into more uh, spending power for uh, a number of our citizens resident in that state. But by and large, one would not be able to point at any concrete project, say, this is what this governor have done between uh, 29 May 2023, and uh, today being 25th of uh, May 2024. 
uh, there is nothing physical. And the core duty of government is mainly to provide infrastructure, uh, security, uh, to enable people and private investors uh, operate freely uh, within the economy. Uh, you look at uh, Enugu State also, if you go to Enugu State, you will be forced to also clap for the governor. Because since I knew Enugu State as a human being, they have not had pipe and water, public water supply. And this governor came and said, look, I'll do it within 180 days. And today there is a, a measure of public water supply in Enugu State. So one can commend him. This is a critical infrastructure that any government uh, should provide for its uh, people. So I commend the Enugu State governor for that one. That is the kind of leadership one is uh, expecting from governors. But by and large, you look around the country, uh, yeah, you must commend someone like uh, Governor Dauda of Zafra State, who is also taking agriculture to the next level. Uh, I'm one person who believes that uh, the federal government has no business in, 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 in sec certain sectors like agriculture. What do you need a Minister of Agriculture for? Uh, the, the farmers are mainly in the local governments. So what you need is a policy that can uh, uh, encourage the exportation of our finished agricultural good at the federal level. But agriculture policy should mainly be domiciled in the states. The money you send to federal minister will be going for conferences, paying salary to civil servants or the federal ministry. I consider all of that a wasted resources. If you pump it into the states and down to the local government, you will have more results. Okay. Same uh, apply to many okay, other ministries Mr. that we have at the federal level. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, Mr. Jai, by and large, the money shared, the FAC, is more than it used to be. Because I think last month, I think we heard that 1.2 trillion was shared. Because the money is now more, of course, people's expectations are also high. They, they want to see more being done in the States. Are there any standout governors for you who are doing great things as a result of this extra money which is coming to the States? Very well. Um, like I started off by saying, if you want a private organization and a new leadership at the management level, is brought in, you could hit the ground running within a week, two weeks, and things begin to you know, turn out well. But when it comes to the issue of politics, it is primarily very difficult to have that. However, there are certain state governors which we can see overwhelmingly have the support and the mandate of its people, of its, of its people such as Governor Alex Oti of Abia State, you could see when he came in, Alex Oti is coming from the background of the corporate setting. Apparently, he had vowed for the position of governor about once or twice. So he was better prepared from day one. He hit the ground running. And there was no distraction by court, political tumor, because everybody in Abia clamored for him. It was overwhelming, and his victory was clear. So he had the mandate of his people and the support. So politically, he had the free will to do quite a lot within a short period of time. But you wouldn't say that much in a very contested state whereby there is not the overwhelming support. So when politically you take a certain step, even in the best interest of your people, and it would probably bring about some temporary hardship, you would see that politicians could take advantage of that and begin to cause trouble. However, one more thing I would like to say is that state governors, and I think it applies to even the government in general, it's high time they start running their states or their government or their parastatals like a typical organization. And when when an organization is well organized, there's a succession plan, there is continuity, there is discipline, you would realize that most of the state governors would perform well. Now, there was a time in Nigeria, civil servants would get to work about 10 o'clock, 12 o'clock, probably they leave at, before 
the time to close. However, I think it was during the time of Governor Babatunde Fashola that all this and many more changed. He brought about stringent measures. He brought about performance review. He brought about a couple of things. Now, when you now, that is why I started by saying, if these state governors begin to implement this, now, within six months after winning, if the victory was contested, you would waste your time battling court issues and being distracted. The next six months, you will try to settle in to form your own agenda. In four years, what do I seek to achieve? What is my strategic goal in four, eight years? What is my tactical plan to achieve those? So I think... I, I, I'm sorry, uh, sorry. It, it, I, I still go back to what I said. Uh, it yes. seems like, I mean, you're, you're trying to make excuses for them. No. Like, okay, they have to battle cases. It comes to the territory. No. I'm saying And my question was, are there any standout governors? Yeah, I've mentioned Alex Oti. Yes. Then you have the Patrick Umba of Inugu, which mm -hmm. himself is quite promising. Mm -hmm. I can't judge by saying because a governor tied one or two kilometers of road in his first one or two, six um, months, that's an achievement. I that's his that. job. You no, know, you aside that the <laughs> fact that that's his job, you're going to measure him by the long run of his tenure. So certain governors might start quite slowly and they will build the whole thing. I'm telling you about the issue of the foundation of building a right state. We're so quick to want to see them just throw up skyscrapers and throw up this. No. This is why Nigeria has been in this level. We should be able to define by saying, oh, in four years of this man's first term, this and this is what he has achieved. Take a look. Look at someone like Donald Duke. He took advantage of the competitiveness of his state. He didn't have less of oil in Cross River. He came about with Tinapa, came about with Calabar Carnival, took advantage of tourism and all. And he tried, and he excelled. However, when Donald Duke left office, what happened with all those? So these are, the, these are the reasons why I said that each governor should decide and determine this is going to be my agenda if I'm governor of Oshun State over the next four years. If I'm governor of this, this is what I'm going to define and do over the next three, four years of my tenure. And that's why I said that it's a, it's a procedure whereby they have to build the groundwork and build on their legacy and deliver on their promise to their people. Yeah, yeah Mr. Ono. Any standout governors from your point of view? Other than the Ebony State Governor. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. No, 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 no. no. Ebony yeah. State isn't standout governor. I just commended him for, for paying a backlog of pension. There's, apart from that, there's nothing else going on in Ebony State uh, outside sharing of money to commissioners, uh, board, and all of that. That was the only thing happening in the States. Now, I have started by saying the resource management, generation and distribution is one of the core problems in Nigeria. Many governors and even residents in states do not think that the monthly allocation that goes to governors uh, think that they can ask for accountability. They just feel it comes from federation to the state it's not our money. So the governors does what they want with the money. If this money was generated from within the state, indigents or residents will have the temerity to ask for accountability. I made an example by saying the former governor of Akwa Ibom State established Ibom Air. Now, I am certain that they will have an annual financial statement of what Ibom Air generates and what it, uh, it spends in its, uh, as running cost. So they know what they get from that investment. And nobody will just dip his hand into that uh, resources and steal it. Now, what you see with the federal allocation is when that comes, they say we have pay salary, we have uh, paid some foreign debts, and there is nothing left. But the governors are still looking good, growing fat, driving big cars, being able to maintain their lifestyle, uh, empowering their friends. That is the word, empowering their friends and political associates. So it's a basic, uh, it's a basic case of uh, resource waste. That is what is happening in, at, at the state level now. So we need to rejig uh, our resource management system 
the federal government should not be the one handing out money to states and local government. Meanwhile, these resources, where this money are generated from, are at the local level and in these various states. The reverse should be the case. The local and state government should be contributing to the central post. Mm. Okay, and well, then you will find more responsible governance at the state level. People will reduce their focus uh, on the federal government and begin to face the state and local governments. Well, Mr. Right Ogun, now, why, why everybody that makes a world focuses of sense. on the federal government. Uh, forgive me for, for interjecting. Why yeah. that makes a world of sense? One of the questions that I would want to ask of you, you know, is, I mean, we're trying to assess one year after the set of 20, 2023 governors. And uh, you have made an uh, example of one or two persons here and there. Uh, um, let me begin with the area of collaboration between the federal government and the state governments. How would you ask, what would be your assessment of that? There is no, I mean, you, uh, was it you or Mr. Ijayi was talking about agriculture, agricultural interventions. The president declared a state of emergency on agriculture early on in the administration. And I don't see how that initiative will go anywhere without collaborating with the states. We also have the example of Lagos in the first four years of the governor of Lagos State and in, uh, I think it's Kebi State, with the Lake Rice Initiative that they came up with at some point. Uh, how would you, would you say that that kind of initiative has continued? So let's begin with collaboration, because no state can be an island by itself. And the federal government clearly cannot do anything by itself without involving the state government. So what would be your assessment of that, of the governors from that aspect of collaboration with the federal government? Well, uh, I'm happy you limited this collaboration to agriculture. One, it is common sense that uh, it is state governments that issue certificates of occupancy for land allocations, not the federal government. What that tells you is that the lands where these agricultural activities take place are in the states and local governments. So, like I said earlier, the federal government has no business with agriculture. The collaboration between Kebi and Lagos State is a good example of interstate uh, uh, business collaboration. Lagosians consume a lot of uh, pro agricultural products that can be sent from Kebi. And I think they did a collaboration in rice production. That, that is something to be encouraged. It wasn't between the federal and state government. It was between two state governments. And that can be done amongst or between other state governments in the country. But right now, everybody looks to the federal government for whatever they need. The federal government has no business in agriculture. They can set policies for exporting agricultural products, not for the farming, for exporting what states and local government have produced. If you want to send it out of this country, this is the federal government policy. Now, back to the issue of uh, uh, state governors collaborating with the federal government and all of that. There are collaborations that have been in the, in the worst interest of states. Mm. Worst interest of states. I give you one, immediate one in my state. I like to speak about things that I know. My immediate former uh, governor, who is now Minister of Works, constructed an unusable airport in a Boeing state wasted the state resources to build airports. And when he finished it, he said he was collaborating with the federal government, and the federal government have taken over whatever they did. What? And only one plane landed in that airport. That plane almost skidded off the wrong way. Now, the new governor came in. The first thing he did was to award contract for rehabilitation of the airport, something that was just constructed. Rehabil just wasting public funds in the name of collaborating with the federal government. But, okay. So I think that governors should concentrate on their core duty, do your job. If you want to collaborate with federal government, 
it has to be in a way that benefits the states, not benefits individuals in the government. Who should be we taking the initiative? We see the governor the of Abia State today. Yeah, one, one moment, over, uh, Mr. Crying Wong. over who airports. Should, yeah, who should be taking the initiative for that collaboration? I mean, you, as you know, it's not just in the area of agriculture, and it's not just even in the area of, of, um, of aviation. We know that there's this constant call, communication al along the area of the right of way for telecom, fiber cables and all of that. We have been talking about, uh, you talked about resource control and all of that. The mineral, the, the, the solid minerals ministry has been all around, you know, uh, talking about what states needs to do. The land, just as you said, belongs to the state government. But what is under that land belongs to the federal government. I'm still... I'm yet to understand exactly how that is supposed to work. And there are several other aspects of our lives like that. Several, several other aspects of collaboration without which the people are the ones bearing the brunt of it. Who should be taking the lead in terms of these collaborative initiatives? Well, as a, as a leader at the state level, a governor who knows what he intends to achieve within the limited period he has in a tenure, because it's just 48 months. Uh, so whoever needs six months to settle in doesn't even know what he, he is there to do. In 48 months, you're using six months to settle in. How many months do you have now to perform? So a governor who knows what he wants should clearly set his agenda and will know where and for what he will seek collaboration with either another state or the federal government. I'll give you an example. There is nothing stopping sets of state governments, for example, Southeast governors, from setting up an electricity generation company. That issue is now in the concurrent list. So governors have no excuse for lack of power in their states anymore. They must not necessarily use state uh, resources to build these infrastructures for generation of power. They can attract private investors to come and invest and distribute within their states. Just like you have the, the one in Naba by Geometrics. It's a private initiative. And the company will now be in business. They will employ people from that place. And businesses too can thrive. Small businesses can thrive if they have good power supply uh, for their businesses. Now, nothing stops state governments from collaborating. One, two, three, four, five, six, or more states. Look, let's put our resources together, float a company, invite the private sector to come and invest. And then, as a collection of five states, we want to generate electricity for our states to increase uh, or to boost our economic activities uh, through small-scale uh, businesses, the small uh, whole farmer, the barber, and all of these people who rely so much on electricity but have to spend so much mm. on uh, generator, falling generators for their businesses, would have gotten some relief and can now expand their businesses and improve the economy. So the initiative basically must emanate from state governments who okay. govern at a semi-grassroot level. And then we must not forget the local government because that tier of government is the most important, but gradually it is being destroyed in Nigeria. Okay. There is no democracy at that level. Okay, who okay, Mr. At the local government level mm -hmm. are basically appointees who are there to collect their monthly allocation and hand over to the state governors. All right. So uh, that level of government is being killed and, and it's, it's dangerous for, for our national development. Okay. Mr. Jai, that was the question I was going to ask you. The local government is the tier that is closest to the people, which should be a very, very busy tier as far as most Nigerians are concerned. Is there enough collaboration between the state level and the local government level, bearing in mind the importance of that level of government being it being the closest to the people? 
one of the one of the very um, challenges Nigeria has in terms of development, growth, and um, the welfare of the people is the docileness of the local government. And the docileness of the local government harm, I believe, is a deliberate thing because the governors, um, a lot of people have clamored that the allocations and monies and funds belonging to the local government should be sent directly to them. But most of these governors, or most of the 36 state governors, would object and have always continuously objected. And one of the grounds Pardon for the objection... Pardon me, isn't there a law that says that their monies should come directly to them? Yes. My, the, the implementation of that law and the enforcement of that law is a totally separate thing altogether. They are in cahoots with most of the local government because most of the chairmen of this local government are sometimes unpicked and the electoral process are used to install them. So most of the local government chairmen themselves cannot object to the will of, the, of their respective governors. So that in certain way is a collaboration which the, is not in the best interest of the, the state citizens of the state. And um, talking about collaboration with the federal government by the state governors, very well. Um, the president of Nigeria, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, has indicated he wants food security for the country. And in doing so, there are other measures we could take. Look, looking at states who also have potentials for agriculture. And now, though, one of such collaborations can come as a result of security, because farmers at some point, because of the security in the nation, has impeded the growth of food from the northern part and certain part from the south. So if the state will collaborate with the federal government, there are many ways where they could collaborate in terms of I provide land as a state governor, we need to ensure that farmers go to farm, they are not kidnapped, they are not abducted, they are not killed. There should be that level of security, and they should be. Ill. And that this brings me back to what I was saying initially. We realize that investing in agriculture has even gone beyond local agricultural people. Now, foreign investors are coming. How do you ensure that agriculture can be upskilled? How do we ensure that um, access to finance for local people can be encouraged? Probably to move their goods, the infrastructure from moving their goods, how quick can it be to the cities? Because most of these agricultural products are perishable goods. So you would realize that the issue of governance is something that has to do with deliberate planning. You need to sit down, you need to map what you want to achieve out, and you need to be deliberate about its execution and its delivery. In the time being, people could have palliative measures by doing things here and there to ameliorate the suffering of the people. But in order to achieve what we all seek, what we all desire, you would realize that any government that actually sits down, any governor that sits down, plans his way, and is deliberate with delivering of its promises to its people, will achieve more results than just running around doing things for for the sake of doing it. Since you agree with Mr. Ono on that one, because he just also said that, look, any governor that is spending six months to, to settle in doesn't uh, yeah. perhaps know what he is talking about. No, this is where you look at it. For you to even engage private sector, sign MOU, ensure things work, liars with individuals that can bring growth, plus or minus, you'll be taking between six months to a year. Because looking at our climate, most of these people that will eject their money, eject their phone, risk themselves, put things at stake, we need certain assurances. So this, that is why I said that government is deliberate. It is not achieved overnight. But you know, the challenge also with that is that while you make significant point, people are in a hurry. I mean, you don't take that away from people, right? Do you? Because People have been hard done by for so many years, so many decades. Little trust, if any, exists anywhere. So when a, government, a governor, for instance, says, I'm still settling in six months, eight months, 12 months down the line, they are wondering, this one doesn't know what he's doing. People want immediate results. Do you begrudge them for that? No, I do not begrudge them. I am not saying, like, for example, I follow Patrick Oba on his social media handles. I'm encouraged by the activities he's driving to Enugu. I'm encouraged by the stakeholders meeting he's having. And I even tell my colleague that if all that this governor is pushing for begins to materialize, in the nearest future, Enugu will be a very good hub 
to live in. Ditto Alex Oti. And Ditto probably someone like Shei Makinde as well. And there's a couple of other ones too from the north. But what I'm saying primarily is that when you come into office, for example, Fashola at some time, Governor Fashola at some point banned the use of Okada riders in Lagos. And the enforcement of this was tough. People objected. But Governor Fashola was calm enough and humble enough to keep engaging the people, telling us the need why it was beneficial to the public. So like what you rightly said, six months, people would, the, the public would, you know, the pain and the suffering of inflation and things rising. That's why I said that in the short term, the governors can tell you and say, okay, we're going to ameliorate for bus drivers, take buses free for this week, mm. probably once every week, we'll pay for it depending when things begin to stabilize. But the result we seek for has to be plumbed, has to be coordinated okay. for us to achieve it. Mr. Anu, do you, I, I know you may want to say a thing or two in response to what you heard Mr. Yeah. Jai talk yeah. about, but yeah. uh, while you are doing that, yeah. also speak to initiatives or, you know, around security, uh, particularly in the northern part of Nigeria. Um, the newspapers from time to time will report one thing or the other, X number of people, hundreds of people actually, who have been kidnapped or some who may have even lost their lives and all of that in the interest, uh, 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 for one reason or the other. So talk to us about that one as well, as well as how federal right. government policies affect the people living in the states. All right. Thank you very much. Firstly, I'd like to say that it is interesting that it seems like it's only in Nigeria where you have politicians come to campaign for public offices without plans. Uh, and uh, people don't know what to expect from those they elected until they get into office and then they begin to plan. Anyone who wants to vie for a public office should know exactly what he's bringing on the table should make promises to the electorate that this is what to expect when I come on board. I should be able to hit the ground running. If you're running for governor from day one, if you're running for governor, you must have your team working on the areas of interest for you. Making research, like Governor of Enugu State did in the issue of water, uh, public water supply. He knew the problem, everyone knew the problem. And within the first five months, he said, within 180 days, I'll make sure there's public water supply in Enugu. And once he came, he focused on it. He didn't need to settle it. And he focused on it, and he delivered on that promise. That is governance. You go to other countries like the United States, everybody knows what to expect if Trump becomes president today. Everybody knows what to expect. Everybody knows what to expect if Biden continues in office. Because they have clear policy objectives when they come into uh, power, what they want to achieve. We don't have that here. We go to campaign and you just hear people shouting, APC change or renewed hope, PDP power and all of that. No, nobody makes any promise to you. So the politics has to change for us to also make progress. So uh, going to the issue of security, I don't really like talking much on security in Nigeria because it has become a business. That's just the truth. It has become a business. It's unthinkable to imagine, just to imagine that a band of bandits or kidnappers now use buses to truck their victims to a hideout. As if we don't have security in the country. Use buses to truck their victims. So you come to kidnap people, you come in a van or a vehicle and you succeed, you drive away as... Do they fly with the buses? Where do they follow? Do they drive on trees? They follow tracks, they follow roads. They don't swim with the buses, they drive them. So why can't security follow them? So it is business, I don't really... In Nigeria, I just pray not to be the victim today. Just pray not to be the victim. Nobody has interest. In, a, in, a, in, a, in a dealing with this issue. The other day I was reading that a soldier was dismissed for stealing jewelries, what, uh, what 35 million, from a, a general's wife. I, I saw it on Twitter and I posted, where did the general's wife see 35 million to buy jewelries? How much is the general's salary? So this military police and all of them, they are making so much money from this insecurity. Oh. And because it is business, they don't want it to end. 
So it will not end until we have a government that is interested in sacking as many police army to make sure that there is safety and security in the country. We are going nowhere. So it's a big Mr. business, multi-billion dollar business. It Mr. will not stop now. It will continue. Mr. Yes. Honor, uh, don't you think that the governors are getting away with what they're getting away with? Because we, the people, are not asking for accountability enough. We, are, we ourselves are shirking in our responsibilities. Yes, yes. We, 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 can't, we can't do that right now. <laughs> with this kind of INEC that we have, we cannot do that. With the INEC we have, until that day where your vote, when your vote begins to count, the people cannot hold government accountable. The only way you hold government to account is your power at the ballot. So Today, you, saying, you have a, a person running for governor, he literally select those who will be in the House of Assembly. Are you saying, Mr. Ono, that the, the elections that brought in the governors uh, is not credible? Is that what you're saying? It, it hasn't been credible since 1999 till date. In fact, this last set of elections turned out to be the worst. I participated in an election in February. It was anything but an election. And then you find the INEC chairman without any moral right coming out to say governors just appoint local government chairmen. So he wants to now take up the responsibility of conducting local government election when he has not been able with his institution to conduct the ones he's been uh, uh, saddled with. So both all the, so all the reports, Mr. Ono, just a, a nation, second, all the reports. Intentionally reform ju Just one second, if you can hear me, Mr. Ono. All the reports, both from uh, observers of the election and the ones that came from abroad, saying that the uh, elections of 2023 fairly rep uh, you know, represented the interests of the people, you don't think that they count for anything? These are, these, are, these are diplomacy. They, nobody will want to come and be running down your country, your country. And the government also lobby most of these uh, 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 observers. All, all, so right, all right, Mr. Anu. Let, let me the ask you, if Mr. Ajayi... Let me ask you, Mr. Ajayi... Do not rock the table. Mr. Ajayi, do you agree with him? That <laughs> the election... Credibility of the elections. Because that is the basis upon which the governors are in office. The, 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 in looking at um, an overview of the election, doing a post-mortem analysis of the election, I would honestly say we could do far better. I would honestly say it is not one of the worst because I'm old enough to understand when elections were conducted, certain time in 2003, and whereby ballots, even till 7, 8 p.m., people are still thumb printing and all sorts. I would say there's a whole lot to be learned and we can always do far better. However, that brought me back to my first point by saying the, the political stability of a state determines how quick its growth can even be. Now, if you're a governor, you have to, like one of the reasons why I used Alex Oti as a pivot analysis was he overwhelmingly won the majority of the mandate. It was undisputable, even with all forms of acrimony and, and gimmicks, he won and the people held that he won. Now, even the civil servants, the public servants, everybody wanted him to win. So you could see why everybody would want him to succeed. But in the event whereby 80% of probably the civil servants are even working in cross purpose against him, the political situation in this country, you would see putting it within six months to one year, it could be quite tough. Absolutely. So but that's why I started by saying that if you look at first-time governors, you probably might just excuse them or slap them a bit in the risk to see that they're just coming off the curve. Okay. Well, so, uh, Mr. Anu, your last words on this conversation and what we well, should be expecting well, from well, the governors well, on May 29. Well, uh, thank you. Just to say something about uh, Alex O.T. and his election. If not for God-fearing returning officer, I am certain that Alex Oti will not be governor today. So you see, the vote of the people in Nigeria election hardly matters unless there is somebody to protect it. Now, he was just lucky that the returning officer was someone with principle, with some fear of God, and refused to change the figures. He would have been done in.
He would have just been in court wasting his time. And then at the end of the day, he will begin to plan for another election. So all I need to say is that for Nigeria to make progress, for us to be able to hold our leaders accountable, we must, as a nation, on purpose, not by some kind of default, on purpose, begin to unbundle institutions like INEC and begin to make them functional and accountable. If an election is rigged, somebody should go to jail for it. I ran an election, and I knew what the resident electoral commissioner was doing before the election. And I reported to the national chairman, and up to today, there's been no response to my letter. All right. So it's just basically, just go and do anything. Just go through the process. Try and rig yourself. I'm telling you that during that election, security agents were telling me to bring my own talks to rig. Mm. That they are, I called them and said, look, they are rigging elections. Security well, well, people well, I, I guess it's part, of the, say, it's, part of the, it's part of the analysis. It's part of the understanding that we need to have. Go and so go, now it's go an, and bring your talks yes. to also so change. Now, now we have we, that so position. We and we're just hoping system. that maybe over time we'll be able to do the right things among ourselves. Because at the end of the day, whether elections or not, whoever finds himself or herself in office, it's all about the people. We have to thank you, gentlemen, for your uh, conversation with us this morning. Sila Sonu is a legal practitioner and a politician who joined us from Abuja Studio, as well as Mr. Ife Ajayi, also a legal practitioner. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you for having me. So we'll return for the next conversation in a moment. Just stay with us.